Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Mike here from Tradewinds RV Center. We're gonna be taking a look at your ISADA Dynamax 24 FWM. This has a full body paint, so I would definitely look into our paint, paint protection and interior protection. This has a recording software for the front while driving for security purposes. This has turn signals on each side of the unit. I would definitely look into the extended service contract just to protect all your appliances anything that could happen in the future. This has plenty of underneath storage. Here's your generator here. Always use the Onan Max non-foaming oil when doing your oil changes and service. This has a breaker switch right here. So if your power is not transferring over, you want to reset the breaker there. Hold down the stop button because this primes the generator. And then you can hold the crank button to start. You can also do this from the inside as well. This has a replaceable air filter. Part number's right there. This has a manual that comes with it as well. All right, now just up above your generator access panel, you have your water system. So right here, you just go to this valve and you turn the point towards what you're trying to do. So we're on city, we have tank, dry camping, and winterize, sanitize, sanitize. So that's tank fill for your fresh water. It's nice to actually put a pump switch out here for you, and you can check your monitor panel from the outside as well. You do have one in the interior as well. Black and gray, this has a little outside shower. GFCI, GFCI receptacle. It's your uh, exhaust for your generator. Here's your sewer outlet. And then right here we have access to your bypass, or your dump valves. Black on the left, gray on the right. This has a black tank flush. So you always wanna make sure that you're hooking up, pulling the black tank valve, emptying the system, and then hooking up here. And then letting the system run, it will run the tank sensors against the wall. And rinse everything off. This has a cable satellite hookup. Here's your city water connection. 30 amp power connection, it's a 25 foot hose. has a seven-way pin connector receiver fresh water drains directly underneath the unit it's that sewer hose storage down there as well it's already has a backup camera installed and in here we have a quick connect for a low pressure gas drill here's your exhaust for the chassis TV bracket in the bedroom, so you can transfer the TV bracket from the bedroom to out here. 110 receptacles, cable and satellite, this is HDMI input as well. Furnace exhaust, this is your Dometic access panel for your refrigerator. Some more storage down here. Here's where your propane is. So the valve here needs to be all the way to the left to be on. You got a gauge right there and there's also a digital one inside. second that about wraps up the outside of the unit this does have a power awning and outdoor speakers all right now I want to talk to you about the Truman tankless water heater so in order for this to work you need a few things it needs to be on 
on the outside. You also need to turn on water heater here. And then you also have to turn the selector until it lights up. Now this will not light up unless you have water hooked up and running. So you need to have water hooked up to city water or be pumping it from the tank through fresh water and running a hot water fixture and then you need to select the heat mode right here. So that's heat and then that's eco heat for power saving and then off. And then you need to run the, wa the water and then it will kick on automatically as you need it. And then you have your switches here for your antenna and then your power for your satellite. You have entry, porch, battery disconnect, step, tank heaters, awning lights, awning control, generator start and stop, water heater, water pump, monitor panel, and then this is a remote switch for your uh, magnum inverter. So if that's not on, your inverter will not be powered up. This has solar panels on the roof. So it's got the solar charge controller. This is basically just gonna tell you what your voltage is for your battery and what your amperage is. And then right down here, we have your equalizer systems, leveling system, so you can see the power's on. Now all you need to do is just hit auto level. So now it's gonna automatically level out the unit. This is hydraulic. Rear's coming down. So once it grounds out all four jack points, then it'll go through and tweak and make its adjustments as needed. And it's actually auto leveled now. If you're listening, there's a little ding that goes on this monitor panel and then it stops making noise. It makes like a continuous beeping noise while it's operating to let you know that it is operating. And then once it's done operating, the operating light here will go away and you won't hear anything. Alrighty. So right in here is your slide controller. And it says right here, as soon as you go to hit it, you need to engage the parking brake. So we'll do that now. Alright, so right down here, you have your carbon monoxide and LP gas detector. You'll notice these remotes all throughout the unit. You've got three max air fans, so those are wireless controllers for them. There's your thermostat, your switch for your bedroom light. We got both of your Jensen TVs mounted. Here's your stove top, it doesn't have an oven. This has a igniter, and it comes with a convection microwave. Here's your Dometic refrigerator. This has built-in auto mode, so you can see there it's lit up on AU, so it's gonna automatically determine where to draw power from. So we're plugged into 110, it's running on the 110 now automatically. If I were to unplug it, it would switch to the battery and gas as a combination automatically. And then you have a temperature set here. Here's your converter, your 12 volt fuses and 110 breakers. You also have a Jensen Stereo DVD player, it's Bluetooth as well. Here's your secondary TV. Fire extinguishers mounted by the door. You've got plenty of light switches throughout the unit. Underneath the sink here, another one there. And then we'll show you the bathroom. So, 
porcelain toilet with the side flush. Here's your third controller for the Max Air Fan in here. It's a dual foam shower liner. Alright, so now I'm going to show you how to activate your backup cameras. Alright, now we're going to hit cam. And now it's selecting our dashboard camera. We'll hit home again, go here. All right, now see, now that I've selected camera and I put it in reverse, now we're in reverse. We're lighting up the back camera. If I hit left blinker, it's giving us left. If I hit right, it's giving us right. So you need to hit camera while driving if you want the camera option. Alrighty, and now the last thing I need to show you is your access panel to your water heater. Alright, now that I've removed the drawer here, take my flashlight, shine it right in there. You can see you got a bypass valve there, and one directly down there for your gold line. So you just need to make sure that those are in the position they are, are now, and you'll be able to get water to the tankless tank. Otherwise, that's in the bypass position for winterizing. And then to access your water pump, you actually don't need to access it to winterize. You just need to go to your city water and select winterize and then activate the pump, which I'll show you real quick to suck antifreeze into the system. So remember, set this to winterize Go to city water connection, activate the pump from your switch up here, and you'll be able to draw antifreeze into the system for winterizing. Thanks for watching.